Hey, what's up, guys? How do you like the shirt? Hey, welcome back to the next video. In the last video, we talked about the development environment that I'm using currently with the Sparta DOS X cartridge and the Mac 65 cartridge, along with the FujiNet device for my disk drives. Well, today I'm going to show you another solution that I've tested, and this is currently using the Side 2 cartridge. I don't know if you guys can get a good visual of that, but this is basically a cartridge-based solution that gives you hard drive functionality, not true PBI hard drive functionality, but hard drive functionality using, let's see if I can get this, the Compaq FlashGuard technology. Okay, I've got a four gigabyte flash card here. And this allows you, this cartridge allows you to place these flash cards into the slot that's built into the top. And uh, what you can do with this cartridge is you can format the flash card in what's called the Atari partition type. Now, let me give you a little background on this cartridge. Okay, this cartridge is developed by a gentleman in Poland named Lotharic. I hope I'm saying that right. I'll provide links in the description if you'd like to buy one for yourself. But the Side 2 interface provides hard disk functionality via a software driver. Okay, It's not a, a true parallel bus interface like my IDE, like the my IDE device provides, but it basically uses a patched version of Sparta DOS X with a software driver that allows you to use this compact flash card as a hard drive. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can set up drives D1 through D8, just like we did with the FujiNet, for example, or the, um, what's the other, SIO to SD solutions that are out there. Um, but it's, it, the description says, and I'm going to read it directly from the description I downloaded, it's packaged in a compact cartridge design. And by the way, the cartridge is not 3D printed. It's actually molded by a professional factory, and it's, it's really, really professionally made. I mean, the quality is really, really nice on it. Um, so anyway, using the special side build of the Sparta DOS X, um, you can enjoy the many benefits of a hard disk interface on the Atari by simply plugging in the cartridge and turning on the machine. Uh, the side driver for Sparta DOS X is loaded directly from the Sparta DOS X's cartridge device at boot up, and I'll show you how that works. And you've got all the necessary Sparta DOS X tools. Um, you've got F disk, which is used for partitioning the compact flash cards. One note about the F disk tool, though, is you need at least 128K of RAM. So you're going to need a 130XE or an 800 or 600 XL with upgraded memory. Just keep that in mind. Um, there's a partition info utility and there's a mount utility for dynamic partitioning and mounting. Um, it uses, like I said, the Atari partition table scheme devised by Konrag Kokoskiewicz. I hope I said that right. And basically... It allows the storage media to be easily shared with other compliant interfaces. Uh, for example, the My IDE, Sparta DOS X, Incognito, the Ultimate One Megabyte PBI, and the IDE Plus 2.0. So anyway, in a nutshell, this cartridge gives you a hard disk, has built-in Sparta DOS, and as an additional bonus, it has a real-time clock. Now, in the last video, I talked about the Sparta DOS X cartridge that I use with the Mac 65. I'm going to show you a way to use this cartridge to accomplish the same goals or the same functionality that we did with the Sparta DOS X cartridge and the Mac 65 cartridge. The way we can do that is there's a custom build of Sparta DOS X. You can actually flash this cartridge. Uh, and I'll provide links where you, where you get the files to flash this cartridge, but you could flash this cartridge with a custom version of Sparta DOS X, which supports the driver for partitioning the compact flash card as a hard drive. It also has the ability to load and emulate ROMs such as Atari BASIC, BASIC XL, BASIC XE, Action, the Action Programming Language cartridge from OSS, and of course, Mac 65. 
The way that works is there's a utility that comes with this cartridge. You can download it. It's called Side Configuration or Side CFG.XEX. It's an executable that allows you to choose which ROM alongside Sparta DOS X you want to run when you boot the cartridge. And let's take a look at this cartridge right now. I'll show you how we do this. All right, here we go. We're at the Atari computer. We've got our cartridge plugged in, our side two cartridge. Let's go ahead and boot up and see what happens. So when you first boot the cartridge, we get the ultimate clock installed. We've got the side driver installed. And you can see that it detected this SanDisk 4 gigabyte card that I have in there. Now you also see under the SanDisk, uh, part, uh, the SanDisk card that I've got two partitions B and C. I currently have this card partitioned and set up right now. So I'm gonna show you how mine is set up first and how it works. And then we'll go back with a fresh um, compact flash card that I have and I'll show you how I created the partitions. So right away, we can see D1 is not installed and I do that on purpose. I leave D1 open because I wanna be able to use my FujiNet to boot specific things or access certain utilities. So on this compact flash card, I've got two drives set up and that's D2. If we can see here, this volume name is ASM and this is where I have my assembly language source code and I've got D3. This is where I've got my basic source code programs. Now, if you go back and look at the prior video, you'll see that I have a similar setup with the FujiNet. So what I did with this one is I kind of copied everything over as far as you know drive two and drive three. So I've got my assembly language on drive two and my basic programs on drive three. So it kind of just kind of mirrors my what I did on the uh, FujiNet. But in any event, um, so right now I've got this cartridge set up when I boot into it um, for Sparta Dusk. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, the cartridge has a switch right here on the front, okay? Up means that it boots to the side menu. So let's go ahead and look at that first because this cartridge does have a built-in menu system, a built-in program, a BIOS, if you will, that when the switch is up, it will boot into that. Oh, I take that back. It boots to the cartridge. <laughs> okay, so one step I missed. Before we can actually boot into the, the side menu, we have to select. Remember I told you this cartridge supports multiple custom ROMs that you can actually boot into? Well, right now I've got it set up for Mac 65. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the computer off. I'm gonna go back to Sparta DOS by switching the switch down on the side cartridge so that I can get to the utility that where I can do that. So I've got that utility set up on drive two and it is called side configuration.xex. Okay, so you can see here we've got um, several items on the menu here that we can choose from. And this is the, the boot mode, if you will, that the cartridge is gonna come into. So number one is the side loader. That's the one I wanna show you, which actually has the built-in menu system for the cartridge. Number two is Mac 65. This is where I told you we could run a Mac 65 cartridge at boot up. Number three would be Action. Number four would be Basic XL. Number five would be Basic XE. And then we've obviously got the ability to drop down to DOS or reboot. So I'm gonna choose Side Loader. And you can see the changes are saved. Now let's go ahead and reboot. Now the switch is down, so it went to Sparta DOS. But if I type car, this is actually where it goes into our side loader, okay? So this side loader utility was written by Flash, Jack, Flash, Flash Jazz Cat, Jonathan Holiday. for the, you guys who know who he is, he's video, you can watch his videos on YouTube. He's a Atari genius in my opinion. Um, but this menu system here he wrote, and this is a, a firmware that you can have um, loaded on your side two cart. And basically it detects devices, it shows you partitions. Um, if you actually have a flash card that's formatted in FAT32. You can load um, COM files and XCX files and games, whatever. You can launch them from here. This shows you your drives that are available. Um, you can unmount and swap ATR disks. You can refresh the disks. You can turn BASIC on and off on the cartridge. 
um, and some other things. But these are things we'll get into later on when we're talking about the actual side loader ROM itself. So let's go ahead and turn the computer off. Let's put the switch in the down mode, which it already is. Let's go back into Sparta DOS. Remember, the switch down takes you into Sparta DOS, the built-in Sparta DOS. If the switch is up, it goes right to the cartridge. So let's go ahead and run the side configuration to utility again. And it's on drive two, my bad. Let's go ahead and set it up for Mac 65. Let's reboot. And this is how I'm primarily using the cartridge these days for my Mac 65 development. All right, so we can type car. And there we are, we're on our Mac 65 cartridge. Now we don't have a physical cartridge obviously, but we have the ROM loaded because of the functionality of the side too. So let's go ahead and load up some source code like we always do. And you can see you don't hear any SIO activity because we're not going through the SIO. We're using the custom software driver that was built for the side two to emulate the hard drive capability using the compact flash card. So here's our source code. Now, one thing you got to be careful of when you're using um, Sparta DOS is where you put your programs in memory. I found that out the other day. Um, Sparta DOS X likes to swap out using memory 5000 through 7FFF. Um, so you need to avoid that area when you're using Sparta DOS X for your programs. So I'm just going to make this program run at 3000. I'm going to comment out this line. Let's go ahead and assemble. Go into our debugger, let's execute the code. And why did it not execute? Oh, that's because I put it at 3000, sorry. Okay, there we go. There's our little DLA routine. Okay, source code is still there. Let's go back to DOS. Now this disk error while saving memory, I'm gonna show you how to correct that. So anyway, we're back to DOS. And there we go. So using this cartridge solution, we've got Sparta DOS X, we've got drive, hard drive emulation, and we've got loading and saving, and we can actually emulate different cartridges. So let's do something different here. Let's set the configuration. To basic XE. And let's reboot. And look at that, we've got basic XC. Interesting. Load up one of our old programs. Uh, let's see, which one? We haven't discussed this program, but I'm, I'm gonna be making a video shortly about how this works. Let's see, what did I call that program? Okay, fire WRX. Why did that not know? Because I'm not using Mac 65. We need quotations in, in DOS. Okay. Now you notice how in basic XE it proper capitalizes the code. So that's one of the nice things. It does auto indentation for next loops. So this is a program we'll get into at a later date, but I just wanted to show you that I'm in basic XE now. So the powerful the power of the side two cart is really nice as far as being able to emulate programming cartridges have Sparta DOS X, have a real-time date and time clock, um, and be able to operate as a hard drive. So, I mean, you know, is it a true PBI device in the sense of using the PBI device? No, but it's still very powerful. All right, so let's go ahead and boot back into Sparta DOS. And I'm gonna show you the FDisk utility right now. So let's type FDisk. And this is the FDisk version 4.85 that I have here, the Atari Partition Table Partition Editor. Copyright 2010-2020 by Flash Jazz Cat, a.k.a. Jonathan Holiday. And there's his website right there if you want to go read more about this. 
But in any event, let's go ahead and hit escape and let's go up to the menu and let's open our disk and you can see there's our SanDisk 4 gig. And you can see right here that this is our partition table editor and as you can see right here, I've got two partitions. The first one is um, 2000 sectors roughly and it's set up as drive two with um, 256 bytes per sector. And then I've got the second partition here, which is drive three. Again, 2000 roughly sectors at 256 bits per sector or bytes per sector. So if we wanted to create another partition, let's say we wanted to create a drive four. Um, we go up to the menu and we hit partition and we go insert. And operation may invalidate data in higher DOS partitions. Okay, actually, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to arrow down to the, the empty slot and then do an insert. Okay, so we're going to do 2000 sectors, hit enter. Okay, let's go back up to the menu. Every time you want to change one of these parameters, you have to go back up to the menu. So let's do the bytes per sector. Uh, wrong one. Let's make it 256. And let's go back up and assign the drive. We're going to set D4. And that's pretty much going to now create me a new partition, drive four. So we hit escape. We go back to the partition table. We write it. Yes. Okay, that's updated. And now we can exit. Yes. Okay. So if we go to our new drive four, we try and type a directory. Of course, it's going to fail because we have to format it. So that's where our format command comes in, the Sparta DOS X. Now, unit numbers here, this is going to be unit number four, which in Sparta DOS terms is drive D. And all of these parameters, when you're using a hard drive, are not valid. All we have to do is use the B build directory function, okay? Because this is actually not a physical disk. So we build, it says directory is about to be cleared. You hit yes. Caution again, destroys all data. You hit yes. And that's that. We escape out of that. And now when we type directory of D4, we've got our new partition. And we can just as easily now copy from D2, everything to D4, everything. And there it goes. And you can see how fast it is. This is not SIO driven. This is actually um, driven through the cartridge port, which is direct memory access. So it's going to be um, a little quicker than SIO, obviously. And it's silent as well. There's no SIO activity. And there we go. Now we can change the volume of this drive with our change volume. Um, whatever, call it data. Now our volume name is data. Okay. So that's how easy it is to set new partitions on the, the actual compact flash disks. All right. Uh, what else can we talk about? So being that we're loading from Sparta DOS, we can get a directory of the cartridge contents. And you can see the directory, when you type car colon, you're actually getting the directory of the cartridge. And you can see here most of the Sparta DOS commands that are not memory resident. Um, for example, the append command, the menu command, the car command, the change dir, check disk, change time and date. You know, all the stuff that you would normally expect in Sparta DOS is built into the cartridge. Okay, so we don't even need the Sparta DOS tools kit disk that I showed you in the last video with the Fujinet. It's all built into the cartridge right here. All right. So there we go. So we've got our cartridge. We've got our development environment. By the way, let's go back to D2. I just wanted to show you one more configuration that we have here. Let's do action and reboot. Now keep in mind guys, all I'm using right now is the cartridge. I don't have any disk drives. I don't have any SIO devices connected whatsoever. And there's action. It's beautiful. So again, with this single cartridge, we've got a hard drive. We've got a programming environment and one of many cartridges. Um, we've got basic, we've got Sparta DOS, we've got a real time clock. 
We've got everything we need to develop for the Atari computer. So is it worth the money? In my opinion, absolutely. I would say that the ultimate setup would be to have the side two and the Fujinet and those two in tandem, you've got everything you need for your Atari. Um, if you want to buy this side two, look in the description. I've got the link there for you. If you have any questions about how to, or if you'd like to see me write a, a creative video on how to flash this guy, you know, flash the different versions of Sparta DOS on there or get more depth into the technical how to's of this cartridge, let me know in the comments and I'll create another video. Um, but I think I'm going to be going back to programming in the next several videos. We're going to be doing some basic and get getting into the assembly language again. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Um, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button for the video. Uh, I'd like to get some more people involved and um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video. Take care.